When you're down at the railway, you may have noticed that our trains carry discs or lamps on the front of trains. Now, these serve two purposes. The first one is to note which direction the train is going in. So the discs or lamps will go on the front and you'll have a red tail lamp on the back of the train. The second one is to tell the signalman where the train is going. Granted, for Mulsford, it can only go to Walton, but it's a bit more complicated than that. Here's something you've probably never thought about, but once I tell you, some of you definitely will. The most basic assumption we make when we get on a train is that it's actually heading towards its destination. For example, if I got on a train to Penzance and ended up in Aberdeen, nice city as it is, would not be a happy bunny. I'd also be quite impressed that um, on the whole journey, not one single driver said, hey, uh, this does not look like the West Country. Now this has uh, two parts to it uh, and two responsibilities. The first one is the driver. All drivers sign the route, so essentially means they know where they're going. So they should accept a wrong route. But the most crucial responsibility is from the signalman. The signalman, as we know, controls both the local area, so where trains go around Allsford, and cattle dock, platforms, or down in the sidings, to a much broader scale. So whether they go to Alton or Wick whether they go to Alton or Alton. So the first statement I made about discs being put on the front to let the signalman know where the train's going sounds a bit ridiculous, since A, there's only a finite number of locations on the watercrest line you can go to, and also for Mallsford, there's only one direction you can go to. But we need to look at the bigger picture. In its heyday, this station was part of a vast network covered by Southern Railway. And there are multiple ways of getting to the same location. For example, uh, if you wanted to take a train from London to Bournemouth, you could go two ways. You could take the main line via Basingstoke, or you can take the secondary main line via Alton. But considering these trains will look the same as any other, how do you know you're going to be sent in the same direction? In its heyday, Box Junction could send you in three directions. One, north, Basingstoke, on the Basingstoke and Alton Light Railway. You can be sent west to Winchester on the Midhance Railway, or you can be sent south to Fareham on the Meon Valley Line. Now that's a one in three chance, not exactly favourable, and that's when you have to bear in mind that you can be passing over hundreds, if not thousands, of junctions on your journey. The odds to getting to your destination suddenly incredibly slim. Now, what can you do about this? Well with a light timetable and a strict adherence to it, you could roughly tell which train is coming, but like trains today, they don't always run on time. You could get the train to stop at the signal box and tell the signalman where he's going, but that wastes time and completely ruins the railway's marketing strategy of telling people how the railway is a fast way to travel in style. If only there was some sort of way to tell a signalman from a distance what kind of train was coming. Let me show you. They came up with the idea of placing discs or lamps on the front of the train in certain arrangements which would denote what type of train it is or where it's going. This would help the signalman send your train in the right direction. That combined with a set of bell codes which would help denote the type of train meant you were pretty sure what train was coming. At its height, in 1944, Southern Railway had 33 different combinations of discs which you could use to denote where your train was going. But the problem was, there were more routes, a lot more than 33 possible routes. So a number of head codes had to be used multiple times, which made things a little more interesting. Here's a head code you're likely to see when you're next down. This was Waterloo or Nine Elms to Southampton Terminus via Alton over the mid Hans Railway. But, it was also used for Windsor and Ascot via Staines Curve and a number of others. So it does get a bit more complicated. You could also get name trains which would carry their own special headboards such as the Pines Express, the Devon Bell, the Royal Wessex, I could go on. 
In its heyday, Southampton was the gateway to the world, and regular trains known as boat trains would run from London Waterloo down to the Southampton docks. Cunard Line was and still is known for glamour, prestige and style. So they decided to go one step further. Instead of being greeted with the Cunard way when you board the vessel, why not be greeted with it when you board the train? The Cunarder was the first named boat train and was made up of Pullman and regular first class and really took off. Shortly after, lots of other shipping companies wanted a piece of the action there, so you saw lots of different named boat trains running the Waterloo to Southampton line. Sadly, like all good things, it didn't last. And it sort of faded away without pomp or ceremony. A great shame. Anyway, back to our headboards. Here's some headboards you might see on your next visit. Granted, not all at the same time on the same locomotive. The top one is our real L train, um, which is very self-explanatory. We've got the mid-hands headboard, which we occasionally bring out on service trains or special occasions. So you may notice that Flying Scotsman was wearing it when it opened the section back to Walton. Countryman is our Sunday dining train. The Wizard Express comes out at Wizard Weekend. Santa Special obviously comes out with Santa trains. And the Pines Express. Now the Pines Express was a popular train with enthusiasts that traveled from Manchester to Bournemouth over the Somerset and Dorset line. Now the Somerset and Dorset line boasted steep gradients of one in 50, which were very steep, very steep for a locomotive indeed. So normally needed to be double-headed, which provided a spectacular sight. Most of what we talk about relates to the southern region exclusively, except for the Pines Express, which has been no travel from Manchester to Bournemouth. Now, the other big four companies, so LMS, LNER and GWR, they developed their own system for arranging lamps on the front and essentially to tell the same thing, what type of train have you got? Now, Southern Railway were unique. They were the only ones to use discs to identify the train as well as lamps but that is definitely one for another time. In fact, actually, all four companies had their own style of lamp, just to make things more exciting. But Headco discs and lamps didn't last forever. Eventually, it was going to change, and Southern Railway came up with a new idea, a two-character number, which would denote the route of a locomotive. So, for example, 76 was Southampton Central to Alton, and 90 was Waterloo to Weymouth Quay. Occasionally, you'd see a combination of lamps, discs, and reporting numbers for trains travelling on unusual routes, so the signalman could route them accordingly. Southern Railway occasionally painted the numbers onto discs. GWR had a free character frame which they can mount on the front of a locomotive, or failing that, they just chalk the number on the front of a smoke box. Now, the discs and lamps lasted until about the 1960s when British Railway brought in a standardised four-character format, which would apply across all regions, with exception of the southern region, who were allowed to carry on using their system for a little while longer. That system is still in use today, and here's what it looks like. Welcome back to Thames Valley Signalling Centre, and I'm here to show you what we see today. In the platform, I have one Alpha Zero Two. Now, all trains nowadays will have a four-character head code, and that's standard for the whole network. The first character will be a number, and that tells me exactly what type of train it is. So, for example, uh, in this case, a Class One is an express passenger train. Uh, in the platform, we have a Class Two, which is a stopping passenger train. A Class Six is a freight train limited to 60 miles an hour. A Class Five is an ECS, and we could go on and on. The next character is a letter, and that tells me what route it's going on. So, for example, in this case, Alphas go from Bristol Temple Meads to London via Bath. Uh, we also have a 1 Charlie 07. So, 1 means an express passenger train, Charlie means it's going from London Paddington down to Bristol and the West via Swindon and Bath. The final two numbers are the unique individual identifier for that train because in one day you're going to have more than one train running a certain bit of route. So for example, 1 Alpha 02, the train after that one will be 1 Alpha 04, 0608 and so on. So that's what we have nowadays from sticking discs on the front of trains to a digital system. 
Just a quick thank you again to Network Rail for letting us use the simulator room, and hopefully this has given you an insight into what we see today as signalers. And there you are folks, the reason we put discs and lamps on the front of locomotives is to hark back to the days of when you would need them to tell the signalman where you were going. And we also had a look at a modern day system, so thank you lots to Network Rail for letting us use the simulator room. That's all from us this week guys, thank you so much for joining us and we shall see you next time for another episode of Things You Now Know.